interest income tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our exam. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Sample form 1040 using LaCert software to populate it. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You could also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules, IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Our starting point as usual is gonna be the single filer, Mr. Anderson. We don't have any dependents down here to kind of confuse the picture. 100,000 W-2 income. We've got the 12,950 at the standard deduction. The 87,050, we can mirror that over here in our tax formula worksheet where I'm gonna say the income is gonna be 100. 000, pulling over to the first line of the income, 12.9 standard deduction, 87,050, that matching what's on the uh, taxable income. Page two, I'll let the software do the tax calculation, 14.774 in this case, 14.774, that's where our major focus is, but we have the 15,000 that we're assuming for uh, the withholdings as well. Okay, so let's let's add some interest here because that's what we're interested in at this point. Eh? So we're gonna go down uh, below. The interest is gonna be pulling in down here where we have the tax exempt interest on line 2A and the taxable interest on line 2B. If we go over a threshold of 1,500, then we could attach the schedule B or must attach, I should say, the schedule B uh, in that case. So that's the general rule. If we're looking at the form for interest, we're usually looking at a schedule, uh, a, an interest income 1099 INT type of schedule. This might come actually from a financial institution. So you might not have like this whole thing. It might not look exactly the same, but they'll have, you know, it'll be say 1099 INT on it somewhere generally, and it'll have the same box numbers and if it's a taxable component, you're going to have box one because that's where they'll put the taxable amount. If it's non-taxable, if it's something like tax exempt interest, possibly you're going to have this uh, box eight down here. These are some of the more common type of calculations of interest. Now, for most taxpayers, of course, we would expect the primary source of income if they're in their working years to be W-2 income, for example, and then the interest income would be on those investments that they have, usually investments that are outside of even a 401k plan or something. So we would expect that the interest income for most people is not gonna be the most significant part of their income. If they're retired individuals and they have more money that is invested uh, in, 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 in earning interest, then you would expect the interest might be larger. Obviously, when we think about interest, we're thinking that uh, if someone has a large amount of interest, income you would expect that they have a significant amount of savings that are saved somewhere oftentimes would be generally the case all right so we can jump to the data input possibly i'm going to go to the 1099 interest and let's say that this comes from a financial institution i'm just going to say bank one here and let's say that we had 500 dollars in interest let's just start it up 500 if i pull on over to the tax return and say what would happen we still got our hundred thousand w2 income but now we've got the 5,000, that's the taxable interest income. Notice there's no Schedule B popping up over here because it's not over the threshold of 1,500 to be on the Schedule B. And so that of course increases our taxable income and so on. I can reflect that on our schedule over here on the income line. Now I might make another schedule called a Schedule B, which I don't have yet. So I might say, let's make another schedule and then I'm just gonna call it a Schedule B. Now, in this case, I don't have a schedule. It's I'm not using the Schedule B on the tax return, but I'm gonna call it a Schedule B 
interest and dividend uh, because and then I'll, this is where I'll pull the interest and dividend over to page one whether it's over the threshold uh, to, uh, or not to actually have a schedule be populated on the tax return I'm gonna select this whole thing right click the worksheet I'm gonna format the cells and just build this as we go currency I'm gonna do this fairly fast because it isn't an Excel class but I think it's useful to see how we construct this thing as we go none here I'm gonna say no decimals and okay scroll in a bit this is going to be i'm going to say this is interest and dividends boom and so let's make the whole thing like bold too and i'm going to make this black and white home tab font group making it black making it white bam and then the first part i'm going to say this is interest and i'm really just going to be focusing in on the taxable interest that's going to pull in to our tax calculation I'll make this a little bit larger and so I'm going to leave some space here for like a few institutions that could be input because I might have multiple financial institutions I'm going to make that blue so we'll go up top and say font making it blue if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors standard I'm using that blue you don't have to use that blue by the way I just use it because I like it home tab font group border drop down and there's the borders and so this is going to be bank one put the 500 and i'm going to sum that down here for the total total interest and sum it up and so we just put a little worksheet together so we can recalculate this let's check the spelling of it check the spelling why don't you because you can't spell worth nothing man it's horrible well, look at that what are you talking about i spelled everything right In any case we're going to pull that to page one let's pull that on over to page one and double click on the income line and I'm going to go to the end of it and now we're going to add this other schedule just pulling into this line one and that's going to be the schedule B and I'll say the total uh, interest let's pull that in I'll probably have to modify it. let's actually modify it. you're going to modify it and attach it to the stuff that right now I should modify that a little bit differently that's going to be the total interest and then I'm going to have dividends dividends and let's make that black and white up top black and white and then let's say that we have our space for the dividends we can have here boom and let's make this bordered and uh, blue and then I'm gonna say this is total dividends total dividends which will be the sum of this outer column and then I'm going to say there I'm going to have a line that says total interest and div divid dividends and this will be the total of the outer column interest and dividends so that line one on the form 1040 should pick both those up so I'm going to I'm going to delete this last bit and I'm going to say I want it to pick up that bottom line, the bottom line of all that. Boom. Schedule the 500 from there. So there we go. So bottom line, it's back. It's up to the 1,005. 12,950 standard deduction. 87,550. Looks Mui B to the N. Page 2. And 14,884 on the tax now. So 14,14884. Okay. Let's imagine. Imagine. And then we had a tax exempt uh, income over here back to page one on the interest just to make a little bit more complication of things just to complicate things a bit and we'll say that would be in like box eight where we have that tax exempt kind of thing if I go back on over I'm going to say let's say that was from another financial institution I'm just going to say bank two or it's got municipal bonds we'll say and let's say that they were uh total uh tax exempt interest let's say that was 200 or whatever so then if I pull that on over I'm going to say 200 tax exempt so now we've got the tax exempt interest at the 200 and the taxable interest at the 500 and the 200 is not changing any of my calculation because it's it's reported I'm showing the IRS I'm saying hey this is what's on the w2 I'm telling you it's there 
but it's not including because it's exempt. I said it was exempt, so we're still at the 87550, uh, even though we put that there, 87550, page two is at the 14884, just as it was before. So now let's go back on over and say, let's bring it over the threshold of, uh, of 1,500, so Schedule B will populate over here. So let's go back on over and let's make another one. Let's say this is bank three, bank three, and we'll say that we had another 1,000. So, so let's say, let's say 1,200. That should take me over the threshold, well over the threshold. So I'm gonna say forms. So now we still have the 200 exempt, 1,700 like we would expect, but we also see the sub schedule now populating. It's populating a gigantic cosmos. Which is the schedule B. So remember when you think interest income, you think schedule B, but the actual schedule B will only be necessary if your interest income is significant material enough for the IRS to say, we want you to include a separate schedule, listing out the institutions that actually paid you in a more detailed way, that uh, amount is gonna be 1,500. So, uh, so here's that. So we've got the bank and the interest that adds up to the 1,700, which of course pulls in to the first page of the 1040. So now we're at the 1,007. If I go back to my data input over here and was to mirror that, uh, I could add another schedule for like bank, bank uh, two for the exempt portion. I just wanna make sure it's outside. Maybe I put that out here somewhere like 200, you know, out here, 200 or something, you know, and I might have tax exempt uh, dividends. So I might, uh, or, or, or non-qualified, non-qualified dividends and stuff that I might want to break out. So maybe I say this is exempt just for data, just so I can see the exempt portion. And then I can say bank three, three was for, uh, what, what, what did I say? 1,200. And so the total exempt is over here. I'll sum it up. Sum it up, little darling. Sorry about that. So in any case, that adds up to the 1,007 pulling over. So now we're at the 1017 minus the 12,050, 88,950. 88,950 is what is down 88,750. I'm at 88,950 K the heck paso 1000 and then 101 1017 1017 1017 12950 12950 88 750 yeah, that's right 88 750 yeah what are you talking about and then the tax calculated on page two that's 15 148 15, that's not a 15, yeah, 15, 148, 15, 148, boom. So there is that. So that's the general idea. Usually the interest is fairly straightforward, but you can have those kind of weird situations sometimes with the bond and the amortization of the bond premium and that kind of stuff. So just remember the general rule on, on if you got a 1099 and you're saying, okay, the 1099 says I have this taxable component, but Part of that is is like something that I, I shouldn't have to include because it's a bond premium or a nominees or something like that. Then what you wanna do is say, I gotta report this on my taxes as it shows on the 1099 or the IRS is going to almost certainly give me flack about it. You know, try to, try to give me a notice on it or something. So I've gotta show them why I changed it. So this one, I'm gonna say bank four or whatever. We're gonna say, let's say that we've we've got we've got we've we got a thousand from this bank, but I'm not taxed on part of it because I'm gonna I'm gonna distribute it, or I'm not taxed on all of it. Let's say, so then underneath it, I might add something which would say give me some rationale, which might say, well, this is a nominee distribution, and then I could show the negative one thousand here that would say okay so the iris can at least see okay now i see that it was on there and then you took it off with this some kind of rationale so you would think that at least just like the computer in 
uh, the IRS side of things isn't just going to say, oh, well, you didn't put something on there that matches the 1099 because the computer will at least see it matched up. And then you had some other thing, the rationale, which was which is showing why that that 1099 was in essence wrong or, or why you adjusted the 1099 format. So we put it on the last line here. We said there's the 1000 and then we changed the 1000. So now in box two, it's in essence not included. And again, you might say, well, why didn't I just not include either of these lines? Because you come to the same subtotal down below because you're trying to tell the IRS, look, I know you got a 1099 for a thousand dollars, but I, that shouldn't be me. That's someone else that it's going to be distributed to because of whatever reason or whatever, or there's a premium bond premium amortization, or it's a nominee distribution or something. And therefore you have that adjustment again, unusual situations to have that in place. But the concept is important being that obviously these forms that we're receiving W2s, 1099s, 1098s, these are forms that the IRS has too. And if there's something that needs to be adjusted, something that's wrong, we've got to communicate that to the IRS, not only to the human beings, but to the software that they're using to kind of audit and double check what we put to the format that, that, that they're getting, the forms they're receiving uh, in such a way that hopefully things are as clear as possible so that uh, we can get things done. So those are the general, that's the general idea.